Hey, welcome back. This morning we are at Exodus chapter 3 now, verses 1 to 3. Let's read it out. Now Moses was pasturing the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the west side of the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. The angel of the Lord appeared to him in a blazing fire from the midst of a bush, and he looked, and behold, the bush was burning with fire, yet the bush was not consumed. So Moses said, I must turn aside now and see this marvelous sight, why the bush is not burned up. So Moses finds himself here on the backside of the desert, as the King James Version puts it. He's watering the flock. He's much further uh, west than, than normal. And he's out there below Mount Sinai with the flock. And God took Moses and gave him some time off. And Moses becomes a shepherd, gets to find some time practicing leading skills here. There's time to think and regroup. Now, on this occasion, he sees something very unusual. It's a burning bush that doesn't consume. Now, in any normal case, a bush like this would be burned up right away because, you know, these are skinny little bushes in a very dry environment. I mean, it would be a, a minute or two, if that, and it would be consumed if once it caught on fire, like a lightning strike and boom. Yeah, it wouldn't last, a, but Moses watches and watches and watches, and, and it's still there, and it has not, has not consumed. It's burning with fire, but it hasn't burned up. So God could have appeared to Moses right in his pathway. I mean, he could have made it inescapable. Boom, there's a burning bush right in front of me. What do I do? You know, he could have made it like that. But no, it's, it's way in the distance. First of all, Moses had to go way out of his normal path even to get to this place, the backside of the desert. And now off quite, quite far away, he sees this burning bush. He's actually got to stop and decide, am I going to go all the way over there to that thing or not? But he does. He looks at that and he says, I have to check into this. I can't... I, this is so unusual, I have to investigate. You know that in Ecclesiastes 3.11, it says that God has put eternity into their hearts. And that's the way God made us. It doesn't mean that we're immortal, naturally immortal. What it means is that God has given us a love, an interest in order. The universe is ordered. Things fit, fit together. Things make sense. Things mesh together because God made it so that it all fits together. When you see something that's out of the ordinary, it's like, wait, wait a minute. Uh, how, does that, how does that work? And so God put it into us to seek. He also designed us to be spiritual beings. We're made in God's image. That means we're designed for holiness. And so uh, Moses, he, he sees this and he's just inside himself. He wants to find out more because this is, this is very unusual. This is not a normal thing. This is not a normal day. God made humans to explore, to be drawn toward the goodness. He doesn't force us to go towards the goodness because we can override it, you know. We can override it by choosing to consume the bad things, you know. If you if you ate a diet of just junk food, garbage all the time, you you would develop very quickly a a, a preference for that junk food. In fact, I'm, I'm sure many of us have. But we want to uh, move away from that and move towards things that are more healthful. And it just it's going to take some time. It's going to take some distinct effort to do it. And Moses has to make some distinct effort to go and investigate this burning bush that doesn't consume. And here's God. He's all powerful. I mean, he is the creator of the universe. He doesn't force himself on us. He represents himself here as just a, a lowly bush, kind of like, you know, a weed in the desert. And that's the way God is, because he is the supreme power of all. And yet he is so very humble. So bottom line here, Moses responds to God's initiative. And you and I, we need to make sure we're, we're alert, we're awake, we're available, and we're ready, and we're desiring to respond to God's mission. See you tomorrow morning. We'll see what happens next.